By 1970, Japanese theaters were being hit hard by the increasing popularity of television, and as a result, special effects films were becoming less profitable than they were years prior. Faced with these trying times, Toho began to scale down their productions and release actors from their contracts. Thus, Space Amoeba would go on to become one of the studio's last original science fiction films, and the last collaboration between director Ishiro Honda, producer Tomoyuki Tanaka, and composer Akira Fukube for the next five years. A strange, formless alien entity takes control of an unmanned space probe headed for Jupiter and redirects it back to Earth, where it crashes near the South Pacific. Meanwhile, a photojournalist named Taro is hired by a tourism firm to document an excursion to Sergio Island to determine its viability as an exotic resort. There they discover natives who worship a being they called Gizora, a massive squid who goes on a rampage. They also discover the wreckage of the space probe just offshore, and in doing so realize it may have brought along something with it, something that could explain the giant monsters that have begun infesting the island. Space Amoeba is both one of the strangest and one of the most derivative kaiju films in Toho's filmography. While it indulges in almost every trope that had been popular within the genre at the time, alien invasions, exotic island locations, slimy businessmen, among many others, it simultaneously differs in a lot of ways that make it stand out from your average giant monster movie. The result is a strange middle ground that delivers just enough action to satisfy those familiar with Japanese science fiction films, while also doing just enough to leave a strong lasting impression. The thing that stands out the most about Space Amoeba is how scaled down it is compared to many other kaiju movies. There is no military presence, no scenes of mass destruction, and the monsters are not giant behemoths towering over the puny humans below. Gizora, Gaime, Komebas, they are all much smaller creatures that help bring the spectacle down to the human level. It's most comparable to Son of Godzilla in that the monsters actually interact with the human cast and thus feel more immediately threatening, even if they are actually quite vulnerable to human intervention. It's actually quite refreshing especially if you're used to your kaiju being more invincible and separate from the human element. <laughs> Speaking of which, the human cast of Space Amoeba is comprised of a ton of familiar faces, many of which would unfortunately never be seen together again, as Toho would fail to renew many of the actors' contracts following this production. Akira Kubo plays Taro Kudo, a photojournalist looking for his next big scoop. He finds just the thing when he is approached by Ayako Hoshino, played by Atsuko Takahashi, and Dr. Kyochi Miya, a biologist played by Yoshio Tsuchiya, who believes Sergio Island is teeming with monsters. Kenji Sahara plays the closest thing the film has to a human villain. Makoto Obata, a mysterious man who has secret plans of his own. Of all the characters, his has the most development. Aside from that, the cast here is merely fine. Not terrible, but not exactly the most engaging either. You'll get the most out of them if you've seen much of the actor's previous works. <laughs> Unfortunately, before production began, special effects director Ijai Tsuburaya passed away, leaving Space Amoeba in the capable hands of his protege, Sadamasa Arikawa, who had worked on many films in the past, including all the previous Godzilla films. He does an admirable job here, able to pull off some pretty sophisticated effects despite the tight budget. The island sets in particular are quite impressive, and feature some pretty great scenes of small-scale destruction. The monsters themselves are also fairly decent, especially Gizora, who, despite being pretty silly-looking, moves around with a degree of fluidity that transcends the limitations, making for the film's most impressive kaiju. The other two, Gaime and Komabas, are fine, but aren't nearly as memorable, which is kind of a shame as they get the majority of the focus towards the end. Their big climactic fight is not particularly memorable either, but it is entertaining enough, and should scratch the itch if you've ever wanted to see a giant lobster fight a giant turtle. <laughs> Space Amoeba was a film that truly marked the end of an era. It was the final collaboration between many of the creatives involved, and for this reason alone it should be viewed by fans of the genre, of Toho, and of Japanese science fiction films. It's not anybody's best work, but even as a low-budget third-tier monster movie, it has its moments. There's nothing particularly original about it. Hell, even the monsters themselves are copies of other monsters from other films. But at the same time, it's very wacky, even by genre standards, and there's a small-scale charm to it that should delight certain people. Others, however, 
just might find it too derivative to care all that much, as it does indulge in a lot of the tropes that even at the time it came out were becoming tired. Definitely check it out if you can, and with the right expectations, you may just discover an underrated classic. For more reviews and opinions on all things kaiju, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.